Okay, for daily sketch 12 for painting, we've got two watermelon slices. Um, basically, you're just looking at a triangle that's three-dimensional. I'm really going to look at the, the piece that's on its side, and because I have two pieces, the one that's on its side, you know, it comes off to the side, the end where the rind is, but then it's going to end in the middle, past the middle of the page. And really, you just want to pay attention to this angle. Let's see, I think I got that wrong. Of the, of the cut of the watermelon here. Because it's three-dimensional, I've got the front and the back side. And then what's really important is this top angle is slightly going upward, and I want the bottom one to match. Always parallel, always parallel. And then this angle on the bottom is slightly going up and to the left. Okay, And the curve, you just kind of have to eyeball. Are you hitting this curve correctly? How thick is the rind? It's really just shaded. There's not a strong defined line for that rind, but you can draw one if you're not shading it or give yourself a little bit of a guideline. And then you've got that white part of the watermelon that you're not supposed to eat, that your mom tells you not to. And that would be the first slice, so I'm going to adjust this line is a little bit up. And then we'll look at this slice that's behind. Really, you're paying attention to this V and the negative space. Where does this one start? And I would say, you know, not quite halfway down this cut. And then again, take your pencil, eyeball that angle. How far up does this slice go? How far up is it above where this one ends? And then this is just a short width, checking my angle. This slice doesn't seem to be as thick, plus it's behind, so I like that it's thinner anyway to show that it's behind. Okay, and where does the rind start to curve? Just barely above that tip. These are kind of simple sketches, but it's always good to pay attention to what um, what you're looking at. Now this one angles quite a bit, where the top of it doesn't. And then I'll go back through, draw how wide my rind is. Because this is an organic soft melon, I don't really have like these sharp edges. I want to soften those edges a bit. You can draw some of those seeds in if you like. Even though nowadays, don't you think it's hard to find seed watermelon with seeds? They're all seedless. I'm just going to barely shade in the edge of the rind a little bit. This is such a fast sketch, you really could shade in for a minute. We've got a cast shadow, so I'm going to pay attention to where that cast shadow starts here about just barely past that tip. It curves. And then comes back under. Pay attention to this negative space here to help you get that shape correct. And then over here, this cast shadow, it just really blends out. There's not much shape to it. If you do continue to shade, notice that there's a highlight on this edge and this edge.
you don't have a lot of time to shade, but you want to add the idea that there's some value happening, you can do these big controlled scribbly strokes, change direction, and it doesn't look like a little kid that's just taken off and scribbled in a messy way. This gives you a little bit more of a styled look of shading. I'm not even close to filling in the whole area, but you get the idea that it's darker, lighter. Cast shadow usually is darker than the core shadow of your object, so I'm going to darken that up. Okay, there you go.